Hello ladies and gentlemen over there. Thank you for sparing time for this beautiful show once more, the Benjamin Zulu show. Now, welcome and you need to be excited because today Benjamin is going to talk to a group of us or a number of us who are going through breakups, okay? Have you ever heard it uh, it it being said that the more you fear being abandoned by someone else, the more you risk abandoning yourself. This quote was said by Vienna Ferron. And it is very true because most of the time you end up investing a lot of energy in making the other person and keeping them around you more than it is that you are actually making happy and comfortable with yourself. So today, Benjamin is going to talk to you for those people who have already broken up. But again, the pain of the breakup wants to keep you at the very point where the accident happened. What do you do when that breakup is actually so painful but again you know very well that you're supposed to be out of it but you can't hey benjamin hello it sounds like a paradox yeah that you initiated the breakup exactly but it is still hurting you so bad <laughs> people may think you're regretting yes you may also question whether it was the right thing mm -hmm. let us start by saying that even when you want out you yourself your news staying here is detrimental to my health to my life to my future I want to give you two points that are very important. The first point is all failures in life hurt. It's painful to fail at anything. You invest some money to try business, to crumbles, it will hurt you. Yeah. Failing is painful, makes you feel humiliated, makes you feel bad. That, that crash of having hoped and sometimes you have invested your savings and your borrowings <laughs> to something. <laughs> and your future and your hopes and your dreams. And you've talked about this thing to everybody who matters to you. Now, you have to explain to them what happened with your excitement. <laughs> what you were so happy about. Yeah. And this thing that you put your all and you went at it and you believed in it. One teacher of business called Strive Masihiwa says, a business is only an idea until you meet the first paying customer. So customers who want to, who you want, depend on them to buy <laughs> and pay. <laughs> That's when you... To meet the reality test. Your marriage sometimes is only an idea, it's only a concept until it meets the demanding situations of life that test the core and the reality. And people build up other people and the ones they fall in love with into fantastical shapes. <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> and they tend to disagree with every warning that it might not be as wonderful. Yeah. Most of our love stories are make-believe. They are not real. Right. A lot of people marry half a week. <laughs> Be careful. You hear a lot of questions and not cry. Why marriage? There are so many divorces, breakups. Why there are so much pain? Because we don't marry reality. We marry fantasy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to prepare you that the same way you get excited when you're starting your new degree, your new master's, new PhD, starting buying that new car, buy that new house. Marriage is a project, like all those others, and it's something you've longed for and thought about and invested towards. And just the same way we tend to ignore everything else to become tunnel focused on making it work. The same disease can catch you when you have fantasized and dreamt of marriage, family, happiness, like us looking this way, you know, appearing this way, posting photos, appearing here, introducing Mr. and Mrs. Start fantasy, fantasy, fantasy as the same tendency. To lead us to overlook the real ground. And have you heard how people invest all the money they had wrongly and they lost it? Yeah. People have invested their lives <laughs> in marriage. So failures hurt. Yeah. Uh, but the same teacher who teaches business, Strive Masihiwa, was saying everybody, in fact 70% of all entrepreneurships fail within the first year. I don't want to scare you the same percentage in marriages and dating. But I can tell you, over 90% of our first uh, love attempts were wrong. Yeah. If you married the first person you crashed on, <laughs> you have <laughs> crashed. <laughs> Thank God it was only a crash. <laughs> <laughs> and today I'm discussing the people who tried in earnest. Mm -hmm. Those who rushed into love in a dreamy sense, the 
the the wild and defiant young people who skipped a stage of development and went to they deserve the heartbreaks i have no mercy for them mm -hmm. by the way they should not narrate to me i'm not interested are we together go touching fire burn your fingers you wanted that go deal with it are we together yes what is difficult with this <laughs> can you tell this under 25 to stop polluting my inbox <laughs> Don't, this guy, I don't read. I just want to know what you knew you're doing the wrong thing at the right, wrong time. You asked for it, voluntary assumption of risk. Now deal with it. Mm -hmm. The only time I'll get involved is you pay me to medicate the self inflicted wounds. You pay first, and I receipt you. Receipt. Remember, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because the madness, you, there's a difference between cheating and chaos. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no more relationships you hear incidences of cheating. In this pre-25 nonsense is that he cheated when I asked him, he slapped me. <laughs> <laughs> I forgave him, I removed the word. Now he slept out yesterday, the other day he slapped me again, I rushed back home, I came back. You can't read, it looks like a nightmare. <laughs> what are we doing? What is this? <laughs> this is a marriage of madness. <laughs> no, they want to know. What do you think? You can't even, you, actually you get instant migraines. So I'm talking about healthy people who are doing something when it was time for it. Mm -hmm. And those who knew, they have ready, they have known who they are. But nowadays, that younger group of mine is beginning to wake up. They're asking questions that are now organized. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of them has asked in two sentences. <laughs> said, I skipped personal development, <laughs> financial empowerment, <laughs> knowing myself. Now I'm a doormat. What should I do? That is an organized question. <laughs> the person has finally woken up. I've seen where they missed it. <laughs> <laughs> My answer is simply brief. Go back to the junction. <coughs> Do what you skipped. <laughs> you fail exams. Repeat the class. <laughs> Sit the now it's all that next year. <laughs> it's very simple. This one now is waking up. Oh, I'm the one who missed it. <laughs> so, we're saying, what if you try in earnest? I don't see it work. Understand all failures feel bad. All of them. All right. In marriage, in business, in career, in anything you attempt. And it clump. But the good news is all failures. They teach you. In fact, the saying is that it's not the mistakes you make in relationships in marriage. It's how you handle them. It's how you correct them that shapes you. The mistakes don't shape you. It's how you handle the mistake. Remember that. Okay. I know very happy people who are coming from with bad, nasty heartbreaks. Who were abandoned at the altar. Who the person changed soon after they married. And one lady told me she was doing medicine, do, uh, medicine or law or something, one of the high flying careers. And she met this guy, and he had been long divorced, and he was trying to resettle, and he looked very serious, as opposed to other guys who had met who were tentative, who feared me, were intimidated by my problems. So he came home and did uh, all the formal things, and married me, quickly, built me a house. And I started like, I told her, Don't you think that was too good to be true? <laughs> <laughs> she made a sincere mistake. Yeah. There's some mistakes that come from sincere people. <laughs> <laughs> the Bramwells, <laughs> who mean well. <laughs> because the mistake is invisible. Yeah. Her mistake was clearly invisible. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a whole, we did a whole video tell, telling young people to avoid marrying divorces because you're not experienced like them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge chunk of their life you're too green to see. You may be attracted by the way he looks decisive, the way he's ready to invest. But you have blinkers of youth, blinkers, those blinders. You have blinders of youth. <laughs> and there's a huge chunk you can't see, mainly too many things. He has already an established life. <laughs> you have to fit in it. <laughs> he's not going to change his routines for holidays, for spending, for habits, because you came in. <laughs> he has a life that has gone. He's midlife, you're early. <laughs> you, you early life. The other thing is, even if he's a serial cheat, <laughs> even if he was the one who caused the first marriage to break up, even if he has impossible personality traits, even if he has, you may not see it now. He needed a person who is as mature as him, who can see through the persona. Mm -hmm. You you are clouded by the persona, the good cars, the sensitiveness. And because he's experienced in handling women, he can make he can ship you off your feet in two days. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what we mean. He's experienced. Everything takes experience. <laughs> it sounds better experience than the brothers of your age group who look like they're still tentative. <laughs> who look too poetic. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her you suffered the same disease mm -hmm. of high achievers who want to go to people who are older than them, way older than them, just because you think they're the ones who can reason like me. High achieving cows make those kind of mistakes. Mm -hmm. 
they abandon the age group and reach far to another person who is in another social group. And at first they seem to have succeeded. Later on they land crash badly because they realize we are not in the same place in life. <laughs> we can move I'm below here. <laughs> now you went in, you have, you have a promising career. Why does a house flatter you? Why does a car flatter you? Why does money flatter you? When you are headed to money yourself, you are hard working woman. Oh, you are going to get this money soon. Why is it flattering you? This is madness. <laughs> anyway, that's another topic. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and we asked the other day, why do people who have a future already get flattered by people's money? Mm -hmm. Brahmel, can you rest sure that you get your money? Yeah. Rest sure. So that you can look at people for who they are, not yeah. the money. Soon you will get it, and their money won't mean a point mm -hmm. now. So we are saying, it's true that when it fails, you feel bad, even if it was honest, there was nothing you could have rescued. The second thing is, sometimes the marriages that don't work are not outrightly abusive and explosively bad. The, the, the worst marriage to walk out of, the worst marriage is one that has good sides and bad sides. Mm -hmm. mm that is not outrageously. For example, a person who is financially manipulative, all other things are okay, they don't cheat, they don't do things, but they borrow your money, never pay. They make bad decisions, they put themselves in debt. You have to rescue them. The things that are happening are financial only. <laughs> there is no unfaithfulness. <laughs> financial. No violence. <laughs> no lying. Yeah. But they keep taking you 10 years back financially. In fact, you could be millions in debt now. <laughs> Oh, you're neutral. You're working, feeling, <laughs> compensating for their mistakes. <laughs> for their mistakes. And you're mark timing. You're very busy, but not moving. Yeah. Those soldiers live to their steps without covering any distance. Mm. <laughs> mark timing. <laughs> and then you look back, honestly, we have gone nowhere over those years. Mm. What do you do? <laughs> you begin to resent them. You may wonder where this, how these skills love. Come to see them as a liability. Because I've taught them many times to be change their ways. And they don't. But Brahmel, by the time you marry this woman, you are also blind. Those habits were invisible. I mean, they were visible. You just bl put blinkers on your face. Mm -hmm. As I told you, people hardly change that much that soon. <laughs> so if you realize you made a blunder, and this person you are hooked up with, you can never build anything. Again, let's repeat. Why do we get married? Mm -hmm. Where are we going with our lives? I told you, you can feel right down always to do things, yeah. to build a fortune, <laughs> build a solid financial base on which to shelter ourselves against the harsh, the harshness of life, on which to finance our lives and finance our children and give them a better future and you know, facilitate their training to go to the world. Number two, to serve humanity, mm -hmm. to change lives, build a fortune. Can you build a fortune when you're in the person who's, who's a leaking tank? No. <laughs> So you might have walked out because of such a hidden problem that the world can't see outside and they're questioning whether you really made the right decision. And even your parents can tell them to forgive, for, forgive her. <laughs> By this point you hate her because <laughs> looking back, <laughs> your colleagues who had what you, who are nearly the same, are way over there. <laughs> you, you're over here stopping a matter. <laughs> <laughs> and being harassed when the period has elapsed for you to use public vehicles, they start harassing you. Yeah. You know the grace has elapsed. <laughs> Actually, you know you are, you, you, the grace has gone away, away when you can no longer fit. Yes. You sit down, they put too many people there. You sit down, it does not move. You, yeah. not, <laughs> you know, smelly things, other things, people, poor things on you. You start having funny, funny, uh, unlucky incidences. Yes. That's how you know you are, uh, your grace period has elapsed. <laughs> When you remember who has taken you back, who made you sell the car, the car was towed away because they took a loan in the logbook quietly. <laughs> Would you go to the same bedroom with the same person? Even you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the second reason we struggle is because the reason we dissolved it was not obvious to the public and they are questioning our judgment. Mm -hmm. And they make some of these people have connected their children very much. They, they love the children you have together so much that you have a fight to the children to explain. Yeah. <laughs> now, let me tell you the key to know whether it's sincere love or it's manipulation love. You shall know whether a person loves a child if they care the environment they create generally at home. Mm -hmm. Some people bring children gifts, they drop them to school, pick them, they talk well, and but they mistreat you, and yet you are the father. <laughs> you are the father of the child. Do they care how they're making you feel, how they're making the child see you suffering? 
If they don't care about you, there's no way they can care about the child. People are never that split. That's manipulation. Mm -hmm. A person who cares, they will say, has want us to be at peace so that our children have a peaceful home. home. If the person doesn't care about the environment they're creating home, that is not sincere love. It's manipulation. The other key is, if they have another child elsewhere, which have been neglected and abandoned and behaved like the child does not exist, mm -hmm. there's no way they can forget that and love this. Both are their blood. Please, stop, mani stop, stop mistaking this. Yeah. If they can behave as if that other child is dead, even you, if you today you die, they would neglect this child the same way. This child is a key to access you and your resources and to keep you in their life. Mm -hmm. Should you die today or go down so that you can't benefit them, they'll forget the same child as if they were dead, like they have forgotten the other one. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. People are congruent. It's us who put on blinkers. It's us who put on blinkers, okay? So we are saying, what, what shall you do then? Because you've said it could hurt because it's a project that has failed, that you had invested your future, your mind, your everything in. It could be even in your relationship that was gearing towards marriage. Even on that day of signing, the priest asks whether you, you still want to sign. <laughs> <laughs> because from here, things are going to the next level. <laughs> Can you think, are you, are you still sure? <laughs> and I, like, I always like that point. And whether there are people here who are objecting to the contract. Mm. <laughs> I know of you here who know something. <laughs> so this is to tell you these decisions, when you've prepared and you know, brought your life to it, if it fails, it can happen. Number two, it could be that the reason you left wa was not sympathy-inducing. When you're being beaten up physically and being threatened by your life, the neighbors can sympathize mm -hmm. and support you. Okay? Mm -hmm. When it is a blatant, like cheating, and people can tell you, uh, run away because of disease. But it could be something like financial, another another abuse that is invisible is emotional. Out here, they be even nice, yeah. but inside there, they destroy your self-esteem. They tell you mean words. They devalue you. They crush your confidence. They squeeze you down, and they do it with, with, with arrow. I, out here, they're very nice. Oh, this is my husband. We have these two children. So that the Zulus, the people can see outside Brahma, we are very lucky. We are happy for you. Mm -hmm. But quietly at home, you go, kind of a man, are you? You even embarrassed me. Don't, don't, don't be talking to me like that. Mm, go away. But when you go out, there, hello guys, we have come. What life do you live, Brahma, <laughs> when you're in that kind of environment? <laughs> Should you tell people, guys, I'm walking out? Ah, now you, you're living a good woman. <laughs> so emotional manipulation and financial manipulation, uh, abuse, are usually so hidden. When you finally decide to walk out, you're alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't want you to underestimate. I know I, we have told you not to worry about the opinions of the public. This is your life anyway. You know what they think. We, we, the teachers, have encouraged you. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> we have told you to do what is right for you, irrespective of what everybody thinks. Okay. <laughs> now here we are telling you. <laughs> the reason I'm telling you not to, not to, not to, under, not to underrate disapprovals by everyone is because you are not an island. Yeah. You have people who matter in your life. You may not listen to the public, but your pastor, <laughs> your priest, your mentor, your dad, your brother, your best friend. <laughs> out here, you can lock them out using some energy and you can manage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but is there a person you can call and receive support? <laughs> you're not an island. Mm -hmm. I know you're a strong guy. Generally, you're an independent minded fella. <laughs> I don't suggest to think you are a psychophant who can stand on his own and make his decision. <laughs> <laughs> that one I'm fully aware. <laughs> but I know you are human and that's enough. Yeah. We are never islands. We are never islands. When you fall out with your partner and they were occupying the place of your basic social support, the next person who could have held your hand is usually the best friend, that sibling, that brother, that sister, that somebody who could tell you you will make it. Mm -hmm. You need a reassurance. Then if you're a prayerful guy, sometimes it gets very lonely mm -hmm. when you don't have a social person who can understand you. Mm -hmm. But the good thing here is this, Brahma. This is a solution now. What shall you do if you've walked out and it is crippling soon after? <laughs> <laughs> you've walked out and you're stuck at the gate, just outside the gate. <laughs> you know, sometimes you leave, but you don't really leave. Yes. <laughs> you're just outside the, the gate. gate. <laughs> 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 you've left now to where? <laughs> You know, this is how people end up in rebounds. They jump into another emotional entanglement to find solace. Yeah. Do not always think people end up in rebounds are weak. <laughs> mm -hmm. We condemn them. Why would you turn from one relationship to another? Didn't, didn't you know that you needed to heal and find your balance again? <laughs> it's easy to say that. Yeah. But rebounds sometimes come from lack of preparation. They don't come from emotional weakness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come because when you jumped, 
you did not look where you're jumping. Remember we said the following, be careful where you run to when you finally escape. Mm -hmm. You can end up in a worse captivity than what you're fleeing. Yeah. Because of what? Because at that time when you're running, a time when you're getting away from Pharaoh, a time when, you, when you're getting removed from captivity to wilderness now. <coughs> Let's examine that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the destination was Canaan, but before Canaan there's a wilderness. Yes. Most of your exits will have that kind of a pattern. Mm -hmm. After you leave the painful captivity, you go to a place of isolation. <laughs> Do you know the thing here? What, what also fails us is what failed them. What fails us in the place of transition, the wilderness of transition and hardening. I was in Exodus 8 today and he said, I tested you with hunger to see that you'd be trust me, that you'd believe me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Brahmal, when, you, when you're changing your marriage or relationship, uh, all that social connection is retiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's another one coming up. Yeah. All the connections that the people you had could be disapproving. The solution is always to look forward and you will meet others who journey into that journey with you. Mm -hmm. That journey was very brief, as I told you. Yeah. From the point of Red Sea, from leaving the captivity, the bad relationship, bad marriage, the captivity, to the place, Canaan is a place of abundance and flow. It's not heaven. Heaven is another. Canaan is a picture of here on earth, where you're supposed to function. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yeah. Place of center and rest. Problem I don't want you to do these shows when you're fighting. Mm -hmm. You're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> don't go to that lawyering, doctoring, teaching job every morning, fighting. Mm -hmm. Your right career, your right job should settle you. Yeah. Not say you're supposed to be easy, but you're supposed to feel this is what I was born to do. Mm -hmm. You can't be a singer and you're struggling with everything, the singing, the microphone, the, and now this is your job throughout. When you're a beginner, when you're starting, you experience some, uh, you to be nervous. Yeah. You expect you to be nervous here and there. But if this is your craft, <laughs> <laughs> I expect to see flow. Yes. So Canaan is where you enter to flow. So from the time you left the captivity to the time you enter where you are established now, you're delivering to humanity, you're serving the purpose of your life, and you don't have eternity, make sure your career is it for at least 30 years, please. Please, if you're doing the right thing, and you're going to live to no more lifespan, no accidents or things like, of course, you know, people like Martin Luther King Jr. died young, but they deserved their purpose. And they say, I finished, I'm crossing over. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. But you're saying, no, normally, most people, when they do their career and they have no more lifespan, they will have served it for a chunk of years. Mm -hmm. All right? If they do not get lost, if they are they are, they are attentive to where they are, people change the world. Like the like Nelson Mandela. Look at people like Mahatma Gandhi. Look at Mother Teresa. It was not a uh, something like <laughs> they stepped one year, <laughs> they left. Even those who made discoveries, how many years had built up to the discovery? How about Einstein had thought about those uh, laws for ten long years before he wrote one down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your career, if it will change humanity, remember we are changing humanity and building for yeah. If it's going to change humanity, to require years of consistency, to work from a place of calling, rest, and enjoyment. You play the ball. Why is why is Ronaldo still playing? He has enough money. Why is Messi still playing? They have enough. They have enough Ballon d'Ors to feed themselves and their next generation, perhaps even to ten years. What? Are, why are these two? They're not working with the money. Mm -hmm. It's changing humanity, releasing their essence and failing. So that distance is usually not long. The distance from breakup to healing and functioning and happiness again is not long. Yeah. It was supposed to be 11 days from Kadesh Barnea to Red Sea to Kad Kadesh Barnea. Is, Red Sea is when they left Egypt. Kadesh is at the foot, just at the entrance of the promised land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 11 days. If you go straight without all this uh, going round and round. Yeah. What delays you is your attitude. You refuse to learn. So they left Egypt physically, but they did not leave mentally. Okay. They're supposed to learn how to worship another God, mm -hmm. how to be obedient, how to be cooperative, to stop complaining, stop making calves, to stop, you know, uh, complaining everything, something comes, uh, to stop fearing and being. Some of us live when we are painful, and when we are paining, when we are hurting. And one king says when he was distressed, he sinned against the Lord. Be careful, distressed can make you become rebellious if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. So some of us are, are hurting, we are paining, then you start complaining and blaming God. Did you ask God when you went in? Were you with him, surely? Okay, you might have been, maybe this person changed, but are you still cooperating with God now? God is very merciful. In fact, he's close to the broken-hearted. Brahman, nobody heals heartbreak yeah. like God. Mm -hmm. He'll give you peace that you can't explain why you feel happy, why you're at peace in all these circumstances. So it's to say, once you get out, start learning what you need to learn for the next journey. How do you learn that? 
Brahmal concentrate. There are some teachers and mentors and books and materials that will be available around you if you are keen to learn what next. Please, mm -hmm. if I can leave you one nugget that will help you throughout this life, until you live this life, it is that one. Isaiah yeah. 50 says, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. He wakes me morning by morning to listen like one being taught. Sometimes when you are being called, and then it says there, that I may speak a word in season to him who is weary. There are some words in your season when you are weary. There are people, resources, and you will know. It's a message from God because it comes from different people who are not in the same place, who don't know each other, and it is the same to you. Same message from different sources. You enter supermarket, and the radio they are playing there is saying the thing you have in your mind. Mm. <laughs> you hear somebody random, somebody sends you a, a quote that is so exact, you scroll online, you bump on it, you know very well this is a message. Once you come from breakup, sit down and learn. Mm. Listen keenly. Create that personal time. Some of these changes are so personal. You need to know what next. So don't sit out there paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Move. Sometimes you are not shown the whole staircase. You may not have a clear plan. You know people are waiting for a detailed plan of the next 10 years. Yeah. You may have your own uh, projections of what you hope to do. But sometimes, the details of where I'll get money for that next thing, the details of who will hold my hand, sometimes Ramal, they are not shown. Just show up at the company you wanted to, to, to operate. Mm -hmm. Once you arrive there, you find that there is provision there. What if you had not come? Joshua did not wait for the, for the Red Sea was divided before they went in. Yeah. I, I want you to differentiate. They were very young in faith. So the Red Sea was divided before they went before in. They went in. Along the way, God wanted to train them to stop mm -hmm. going by sight. So Jordan did not divide before they went in. Yeah. She divided when they stepped their foot. Where are they going? Sure. Let us go now. But the Jordan is too full. <laughs> when they stepped, it stopped. Mm -hmm. God wants to graduate you to stop moving by sight. Eh? Yeah. Don't wait for the Jordan. Just know he has sent you over there. This river is too flowing. When I get there, he will solve it. <laughs> yeah. If you feel the conviction to move forward, move. There may be a flood in Jordan. A big obstacle. Go all the way to there, to the brink of there, and say, I'm here. Act like you're going. And how many times, Brahman, I can't tell you how many times I've behaved that way. And I couldn't. Those are very personal moves that you can't explain to people because they're irrational. Yeah. Faith looks like foolishness to unbelievers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they only come to congratulate you when it bears fruit in retrospect. So we are saying the solution is what? Once you get out there, move. How do you move? Learn, study, listen. Have that quiet time of listening. Brahma, I told you over time that I experienced that heartbreak and I was feeling confused and lost and wasted and failure. And nah, 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 nah. I told you I moaned for two hours. <laughs> I checked the watch. <laughs> two. <laughs> From the moment the bombshell was dropped. <laughs> and I dropped with it. To the time I picked myself up, it was exactly <laughs> because I say there's no point sitting here and crying. They told jo David prayed and hoped and begged to go and pleaded and interceded for the child while the child had still the chance of healing. But when he was told the child was dead, he woke up and ate. So I was following my knife. <laughs> my brother, <laughs> it is dead. <laughs> Give me food. <laughs> so they they were flabbergasted. They said we are going. We thought we are going now to crash, because the worst has happened. Yes. <laughs> he said, "I was praying when there was hope. Now there is no hope. <laughs> what I will do? I will just I will meet the boy over there, but he can't come back here. So yeah. where is food, by the way? <laughs> Can you adapt that attitude to help you? Yes. Pray while there is hope. Hope. Hope when there is still possibility. Yeah. When the chapters are closed. When they tell you they don't want you anymore. <laughs> Please, summarize <laughs> into two hours. <laughs> and it's something I had pursued for a year. I don't want you to think I was not into it. When you are genuinely into something, you can't assume it. Yeah. And when I say morning for two hours, I don't mean I totally got over it. I simply say I got back on my feet. Sometimes the rest of the crying, you do it as you go like an ambulance. Mm -hmm. You just on your way. <laughs> Time. Now you have already wasted a year. Will you add more? <laughs> so the next thing primarily is to shorten the mourning ceremonies, mm -hmm. the rituals, so that you get back on your feet and process the rest on your way. Yeah. When you finally find the right person, there are some wounds that you not have finished with. The joy they bring you in your life will take away the rest of the pain. Yeah. 
Finding true love will make you say thank you for those who left. Mm -hmm. Because finally, they made the room for the right person to come. Yes. Wow. <laughs> How is this conversation could continue, but because of time. Yes. Now, Benjamin, I'm still at the gate. Those people who, yes, they have moved out, but they're still at the gate. Sometimes the blunder that we make, Benjamin, we walk away from a person, from the who, and forget the what. That is why some people are stuck at the gate. Let me break that down because it's deep. Yeah. Some people walk from the flesh and blood. The person couldn't promise. I don't want him. I can't stand him. I'm out. But what did Brahma represent in your life? Poor judgment? <laughs> <laughs> your lack of self-respect? Maybe Bramwell was demeaning and devaluing, mm -hmm. and you've walked out of him. But what gave him room to come in? Mm -hmm. When you say people walk up to from who are not what we are saying, they only change the, sp the result see, of their decisions, and they don't change the root of their decisions. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Go on. Now I need to break. <laughs> <laughs> so ask yourself, how did I end up with that lady? I overlooked how she was selfish from the word go. I accepted a bribe. <laughs> Remember bribes in relationships? Yes. <laughs> Between the sheets? <laughs> I accepted a bribe and I got confused. Yeah. That was the way. So although she, Lily, she, Fiona, was the one hurting me, the real thing, the who is Fiona, the what is careless commitments yeah. on my part. Moving forward, I'll be frugal. And I will not mix issues, and I will not rush. Yes. I like the way you brought it up, Benjamin. Now, let's talk about the bit of support system again. Because I need to understand that by the time I'm jumping out, I'm supposed to have a person who will understand me. How important is it then to identify people who have gone through what you've gone through, or who understand what you're going through? You don't need people, you don't need a person. You only need a person. Okay. Let me emphasize that the transition of Ruth from a foreigner, a Moabites, a person who comes from enemies of Jews, to the genealogy of Christ, took only one mentor called Naomi. Mm -hmm. During transitions, you may not find a group. Sometimes one person is all you can find. But actually, you travel literally with them. You hold on to them and they cross you over. Sometimes, some can only be told who is talking by Eli. That's God calling. Next time you hear, answer this way. The guy who's telling you, is telling you where God calls and how he calls. He himself is away. He, he does not tell you where God calls. Yeah. Near the altar, near the Ark of Covenant. Some of the people will help you are not really at the center of your calling, that close to it like you, but they are aware, they know how to operate. Some of these are only people, they used to hear God. No, they don't have so much zeal. They sleep elsewhere, yeah. away <laughs> from where God speaks. But they are no. Some of the people will educate you maybe on their way out. They were telling you the coaches of big wrestlers, big boxers like Mike Tyson were dying. They were old people, very experienced, but they were on their way out. Some of the people will coach you, the Naomi's are old. They may not be bearing children anymore, but you have a future of bearing children and getting married. Mm -hmm. Then that's not their hope, that's not their future, but their experience. Don't look for people during support system. If you have one who understands, that's enough. Okay, I like that one. The, big, the other problem Benjamin we make is holding on to these people we are working, working away from. We forget that we are giving them authority to dictate our lives. Failure to forgive, how important is that? Yes, we hold on to pain so that we can feel justified in our paralysis. In our paralysis, yeah. I'm still stuck because of the way you wasted my 15 years, mm -hmm. <laughs> and four, five more years are gone. So now it's 20. Yes. While you are mourning the 15, you had another five. Is 25. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> people, there's some pleasure in, in playing victim. Yeah. There's some pleasure in feeling pity. Mm -hmm. Imagine the way you did to me. There are people who narrate and re-narrate. You meet a second time that time, they try to repeat the same story, you cut them short and leave. So they stay there to feel good, to feel, to wallow in pity, to draw, to, to, to attract sympathy. Once you release a person who hurt you, there's loss because you're losing your right to remain angry. Yeah. You're saying, 
Okay, I release, I forgive, now let me take responsibility for the future of my life. So people hold their thinking, I am maintaining a reason why I'm not successful. That person is the reason I'm here. I, I could have been better. Imagine I started this, imagine, imagine, imagine the way she took me. Imagine, 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 imagine. But she's no longer here. Yeah. You're in charge of your life now. Or even if you are still keeping her in your life, it is your continuous decision. Remember, what you don't change is your choice. Yes. What you refuse to change is your choice. You can actually, that passivity is also a choice. <coughs> so we are saying, you may continue to have a person to blame, but time is going. And you will forfeit. Remember Jonah? Jonah, I think 2.16 says, those who... 14, those who hold on to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could have been theirs. Those who hold on to grudges, those who hold on to pain, who forfeit what great things they could have done. Yes. All right. How beautiful is that, guys? I hope you've understood what Benjamin has said. Okay? Remember, the other thing that you need is on the other side of the fear. You fear being abandoned. In the process, you abandon yourself. Thank you for watching the Benjamin Zulu show till next time.